Rainbow Six Siege is next. This game also hits high frame rates, but unlike F1 2020's high frame rates, there's nothing comical about it. No, no, this is very, very serious business. And anyone running Rainbow Six or Counter-Strike Go below 300 FPS needs to drop the op and go back to Among Us. In fact, anyone below 240 FPS in Rainbow Six is considered suspicious by BattleEye and has their account immediately terminated. So then, it's good news that everything we tested is above that threshold. The R5600's 345 FPS average allows the R5600X a massive, breathtaking 1.5% lead. That's six dollars for every one FPS you're gaining, if you want to look at it that way, or a five FPS total increase, which isn't even remotely perceptible to a human player at this scale. Though there are some inhuman players who could probably see this difference, so maybe AMD is just building for that. The 5800X isn't much ahead at 491 FPS average, but it also looks like we're beginning to bounce off of the ceiling for CPU scaling in this game. Fortunately, the human eye can't see more than 24 FPS anyway, so none of this matters. Rainbow Six Siege is a high FPS title in our testing and leaves plenty of room for all devices to perform well, but only a few of them can satisfy the true FPS snob territory. At 1440p, the game becomes completely unplayable on every single card on this list. For Exhibit A, we present the RTX 3090 and RX 6900 XT. These cards can't even hit 400 FPS, which is the baseline minimum for anybody to play any game. Below 400 FPS, there's a CSGO player out there somewhere who's crying about tick rate, lag, and input latency as a result of this utterly unplayable frame rate. If a frame time isn't one millisecond long, what's even the point to playing the game? But only the snobbiest of frame snobs will complain about 93 FPS on a 2015 GPU. We assume that these people have evolved to lose their sense of sight and instead play games purely through the electromagnetic radiation pulses emanating from the monitor and from the noises made by their opponents as they grief them in the game. The RX 6900 XT remains disadvantaged at the higher resolutions running at a peasantly 168 FPS average. Nvidia's argument about being better than the 6900 XT was poorly reinforced to begin with, but also not universally true. It's not actually the opposite of true here. We talk about this more, but at this point we've run out of dead horses to flog, so we're moving on to the next game. At 1440p, the 3070 Ti did about 283 FPS average. Totally unplayable. Gross, in fact. Only pores would settle over such a low frame rate. And if you can't afford its price tag, then it's not for you. And you should keep your pinky on your glass when you drink, because you haven't earned the 3080 Ti or the 3070 Ti. Now, please make way for paying customers as we move on to 1080p. Okay, good. Now that we've gotten rid of the peasants, we can talk about 1080p performance. The 3070 Ti runs 396 FPS average here, which means you need a 6800 XT or a 3080 Ti, otherwise you are physically disallowed from enjoying this game. It runs like a slideshow on the 3070 Ti, uh, assuming the slideshow is displaying a new slide every two and a half milliseconds. Rainbow Six Siege is up now with a 481 FPS average for the 12600K. A Rainbow Six Siege benchmark proves once again that it's more about measuring scaling between CPUs than it is about trying to achieve a playable frame rate. Clearly, none of these are even close to 3000 FPS, so it's just not playable. Time for Rainbow Six Siege. As a reminder, if your CPU drops below 100 FPS in this game, Jensen Huan personally shows up and repossesses your GPU. Up next is Rainbow Six Siege. Rainbow Six brings us back to ultra high FPS games and a very hard CPU bind. The i3 12100F ran at 420 FPS average here. By itself, that sounds high. And it is. The 7950X drops to 607 FPS average, allowing the 12900K a staggering, unapproachable, and embarrassing lead for AMD of 1.3%. Truly unacceptable. As you all know, Rainbow Six becomes completely unplayable below 615.3 FPS average. And not even a single CPU on this chart is playable. It's an insult to gamers everywhere. Frankly, we can't believe that these companies can even bring themselves to sell such products with such low frame rates as just 607 FPS. So shame on you, AMD. Now it's time for Rainbow Six Siege. Once again, we still haven't hit 1000 FPS or as we're calling it from here forward, a kilo FPS. 
sort of like the amount of power you'll need to pull to run these systems. The 7600X leads the 5600X's minuscule and totally unplayable 543 FPS average by 11%. Even with the 12100F at over 430 FPS average, you're safe with basically any CPU on the chart, except for maybe a Zen 1 R7 1700 at 280 FPS. And obviously that's because the human eye can't see less than 300 FPS average, 0.3, 300.3 but everyone knows that. Next is Rainbow Six Siege, where the 7700X averaged a mere 607.7 FPS, not 607.8, which is ideal, of course, and definitely not 607.6, which would suck. It's just 607.7. Now for Rainbow Six Siege, which has basically become the world's leading coil wine benchmark. Companies would pay a lot of money for specialized tools that can reliably generate coil wine. And here we have Rainbow Six, which you can just buy for relatively low cost and generate as much coil wine as you want. The 13700K is at the very top of the chart and it's tied with the 13900K, indicating that we finally managed to move the bottleneck off the CPU at about 635 FPS average. We're getting to a point where we're actually just gonna need a new metric and it's gonna be a kilo FPS. It's, uh, it's 0.6 kilo FPS. It's, we'll need a test with a stronger GPU to determine whether it's the GPU or the engine that's holding us back at the ultra high end for CPUs now. 1440p gives us comical frames, as Rainbow Six often does. The 4090's 634 FPS average hits a sort of semantic satiation except for FPS. Like it's so many frames that the brain stops understanding what we're even talking about anymore. The lead over the 12900K is just 3%, pointing to a likely bottleneck finally at the top end. It looks like we're kind of hitting the cap for what we're going to see on Rainbow Six Siege. So in fact, there is not no cap. There is, there is a cap, and it's a GPU limitation eventually. Or memory, but there's limitations at some point. It appears to be over 600 FPS. It really doesn't matter. Some, some people will think it matters, but it doesn't maybe at a pro level, but probably still not really. Thanks, Steve.